on this site, we have from Owlard across uh, a clear uh, visual line to, to Vinegar Hill. And as such, we've got you know, the Alpha and Omega of the short-lived Wexford Republic. Essentially today, what we've been just getting absolutely correct was this alignment from Owlert Hill to Vinegar Hill. Uh, this is absolutely crucial to the project. It is uh, a monument you know, to the Enlightenment, and given the tremendous um, well, coincidence of, of this site being almost on a pure east-west axis with Vinegar, with Vinegar Hill, and the fact that Vinegar Hill's battle was on the 21st of June, which was summer solstice, we can uh, ensure that we get maximum illumination in the recess chamber part of the mound uh, on the day of the 21st of June. Well, that's the Arden and Survey point that's cast on the, the hill, the Vinegar Hill. Right. And it's that line that we have to get agreement of this morning. Yeah. From the architects. Okay. <laughs> Ik ga hier nog een kistje uitdoen, korkom en krokken uit, ik schemenaar, sterre, en zoals seconde, vrienden ook gehakt. En als haarlijk is, graf Michael, ik verbert aan het schoenen van het hamer van de Tribliner Rivershin, ik ga niet doen. En als midden, ik ga er niet aan staan. En als haarlijk is, in een zee, tevelen, tevelen, ik ga mauer, ik ga om die neer. En als het haarlijk is, niet is. Kan ik kies de uitdoel en tanemer? Dat is alles. Maar als je bonen hebt er reine hagniochte, en als je aan kunnen gaan heen, en toch heen bonen hebt er imacht negreen, en als je bonen hebt er een salus, en als je rei aan polis, en hoe die er reine hagniochte, de eeuw van enlightenment. Zo, dat is goed als. These are slides made by the architectural team of, of a small maquette uh, using a camera that's almost like a little medical, medical eye camera. First one just shows the, the, the exterior coming in a little bit closer towards the entrance. This is three quarters way up through the, the first entrance and I think uh, there's nice feeling of expectation and curiosity as it leads forward and then in in the recess chamber and uh, there's good indication of, of of the light falling down through the through the skyline imperative and, and pivotal to the to the whole idea is that in here um, by all sorts of different processes of juxtapositions of exterior to interior and, and, and so on, that there's a stillness and quietness is induced in this space. A focus of attention, something not very, very different from condition of, of prayer in a pure form. Yes, when, when we get to the recess chamber, apparently it's, it's, it's a, a void, empty. It's not. It's an emptiness filled with light, with, with palpable space. There are no eternal flames, no writings, nothing. Very simply, there are two timber elements that are, that are on the floor, on, on the granite paving. Uh, they are made of oak, and it's made of oak that is 200 years old. This is important. Like the children counting the rings at the end grain of, of, of a piece of timber, they can tell its age. Um, so to, uh, well, the timber becomes a, um, an allegory for time. And being in excess of 200 years old, it meant these would be young oak saplings at the time of 1798. 
witnesses. Um, they, they, they carve ever so slightly up from the floor towards the light that is, that is coming down the monument. We have reference to the, the passage tunnel, we have alignment, but an, another, another part of uh, Ireland's prehistory was the, the, the reverence of, of oak as, uh, as a sacred material. The 19th century monument was very typically, uh, very often figurative, on, on a pedestal. Um, and that had its validity in its day, but I don't think it's working for latter-day 20th century man. There's a French, for example, that, that summarizes the, I think, modern thinking on, on that kind of statue. It says that a man who needs a pedestal doesn't deserve one, and I, I think there's something there's something very much of that in, in our thinking. There's even a moral responsibility on behalf of, 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 of designers, architects, sculptors and so on. Um, that the monument shouldn't, shouldn't just state a fact about a certain time in history, great as it is, but it should also have a continuity and a hope and look to the future. So past, present and future become the now within the experience of the journey through the through the monument. <laughs> Er, how can you not hear a shot? I guess, er, winter.